Hi guys, as many of you know who watch this channel, and we should all be watching this channel, I have been singing the praises of the little ZVE-10 that you are looking at right now for a couple of years since it was released. An absolutely fantastic camera. But something that I have always said about this camera is you should shoot in say Cine 2 Profile or HLG3 if you want maximum dynamic range because an 8-bit camera cannot handle S-Log3. Your image will fall apart. I said that many, many times. Well, you might be surprised to see that in fact I am shooting right now in S-Log3 on my little Sony ZV-E10 and it looks glorious. Let's talk about it. Now, I am a handsome enough man to admit when I've been wrong, and I have been saying that there are no circumstances where you should use S-Log3 with your ZV-E10, but uh, that is just not the case. Let me show you a side-by-side -side image here with my FX30 in true 10-bit 422. Let's have at it. see that. I mean, it is not an absolutely identical image, but it is very, very close. If you were to say to me which one is the 10-bit image, I would not know unless I looked at the files because I did record those after all. So this image is actually very easy to get on the little ZV-E10, but there are a couple of caveats. I will actually take you over to the old computational device. I will show you in editing what I do you know, step by step. But here's the thing is that you definitely need to white balance properly and you need to set your exposure properly. And I also like to use a corrective LUT, the uh, Paul Leeming corrective LUT, leeminglutpro.com. I am not affiliated with him. He doesn't know me. He probably wouldn't like me if we met, but I use his corrective LUTs for most of my footage because I compare a lot of cameras, as you may have noticed on the channel. So it's great to have that Leeming LUT so that I can compare camera to camera and then uh, always have a consistent color system. And uh, that is actually how I discovered that I like to use S-Log3 on the ZV-E10. I was trying to match it up with my 10-bit cameras, match it up with my full-frame cameras, and I was always using Cine 2, and it was coming out quite well. But just for once, I tried the S-Log3, and lo and behold, fantastic! But there are a couple of warnings when using S-Log3 with the ZV-E10, and I will get to those at the end. But first, let me just show you how to set this up. So first and foremost, we have the little ZV-E10, but attached to the ZV-E10 is probably the best value lens in the history of mirrorless cameras, the Sigma 16mm f1.4. This lens can usually be had for about $350 or less, and it competes mightily with my G Master lenses. This is just an excellent lens. You get that nice background separation, nice bright lens. Do yourself a favor, if you're on a budget, or even if you're not on a budget, get the 16 millimeter f1.4. The Sony 15 millimeter 1.4 will work as well, but it is much more expensive. Of course, you need a few lights. I have my key light over here and my kicker light over here. They both have soft boxes on them with grids to control the where the light spills out so it doesn't spill on my background too much. And these are decently expensive Godox lights because they're the UL line. They are silent lights and I love that. But I think the best bang for buck light going today is the small rig 120 lights. So uh, I will list those in the links below. I have reviewed them. I love them. I use them all the time and uh, you get a great value for the light and it has a fan in it, but it is very, very quiet. Big recommend for the small rig lights. Of course, in the back, do whatever you want with the lights. I have a couple of newer panels over there. I have an Aperture MC stuck in by a magnet into this Godox SL60W. It's not even plugged in. And then I got some uh, tube lights over here from Zhiyun. You decorate the back, whatever you want, but uh, with a little bit of light. But what's most important is your key light and your kicker light. And uh, I usually have my kicker light about two thirds the power of my key light. Now you can make it less power if you want, if you want a more dramatic 
look and a little darker on this side, but I, I like the way this looks. And as I said, you need to manually white balance. So you just press your white balance there on your ZV E10 in the custom settings, and you can use a color check or something like that. These are a little pricey really, whereas this $10 gray card, I will link this below, this absolutely will do the job. And in terms of exposure, since I am using the Leeming LUT, I am using Zebra's 85 on my face. It comes in the PDF that uh, it's provided by Leeming LUT, so you can check that out if you want, if you buy the LUT. But uh, as you can see, look, this is a little monitor here. This is a Portkey's PT5 2. It is $125. I always like having a monitor for my cameras. This one is small. Look at this, about the size of an iPhone. And, uh, you know, 125 bucks has everything you need. And you can see right here the lights in the background. And it's a bit gray, of course, because we're using S-Log3 and uh, I don't have a lot applied. You can apply a lot actually on this little thing right here, but uh, I, I turned on the menus. But here's the thing is I don't, uh, right now I just wanna show you the zebras without the LUT applied. So you can see my lights have little red stripes. That's the zebras, I set them at 85, which is what the instructions are on the Leeming LUT. But look, if I get closer, you see? Do you see how those red lines appeared on my face? And then when I back away, they disappear just so slightly. You can see them every now and again, just, but that's exactly what I want. The zebra showing up just when I dip into the light and uh, there you go. This is exposed properly for the Leeming LUT. So let me show you exactly what I do on the computer. I use Final Cut and we'll get into that in a second. But first we'll go to leeminglutpro.com and you scroll down, he has LUTs for many different cameras, but the very first one is actually the one we're looking for. Sony Picture Profiles, you'll see the one, it has S-Log3, but you can use any of these, uh, Cine2, S-Log2, HLG3, and the S-Cinetone, so there are many LUTs there in case you want to use a different picture profile other than the S-Log3. And it says AUD, 50 bucks, that is Australia, so uh, that's about 32 bucks USD, so that is not bad at all. So now we'll go into Final Cut here and I already have the image loaded up for you and you can see it's gray and washed out because I have yet to apply the LUT and I go over here to uh, this thing here. You can do it in settings or you can do it in general but anyway you look for camera LUT right here. Right now it says none and I will go down to my Leeming LUT and I will go to S-Log3 for my Pro 3 and there you go. That is most of the work done right there. But usually what I will do is uh, for my color board, I will just darken the image a little bit to get a little more contrast, maybe put up the highlights a smidge. And then I like to add a little bit of saturation because remember this LUT isn't designed exactly for the ZV-E10. It's more for the A7S3. So you do have to make a few tweaks. And so I up my saturation a little bit and uh, I will also use my color curves. I will go to red. I will take out a little of the reds. I am pink enough as it is as a human being. So I like to drop the reds ever so slightly. Oh, and also sharpness. You have to add a little sharpness back in because uh, with the Leeming LUT, you turn the sharpness down all the way in your S-Log footage. So I just take the sharpen tab, I pull it over there in my effects menu and I just leave it on its default sharpening and it comes out just right. And that is it. So there you go. Now I have a wonderful image and sure I am the subject matter. So that does make it easier, but still how great is that, huh? Little ZVE10. Now, while I am super happy with the image that I am getting, I do have to caution you with a couple of things. Number one, I wouldn't use S-Log3 unless I was in a scenario like this with an 8-bit camera. If you can't control your lighting and you miss your exposure just a little bit or your white balance is off a little bit, it may be hard to color grade your footage and your image may in fact fall apart. And another thing is using the Leeming LUT, he likes to expose to the right for the LUT, the ETTR, and uh, that can confuse the Sony autofocus system here if the image is too bright, which it is technically too bright. Once you apply the LUT, it takes the brightness down, but uh, in camera itself, like 85 on your face for the zebras, that is quite bright. And what happens is you kind of lose that fantastic eye autofocus. The autofocus still works pretty well, but if something comes in front and stays there, then eventually the autofocus, more like a center-based 
autofocus. Now you can avoid this altogether if you do your own color grading and you don't expose to the right. If you just do regular S-Log3 footage and you expose normally the way that it is suggested, say 55 on your skin tones for Zebra's 55 IRE, then you apply Sony's official LUT and you do your own color grading, then you will still keep that reliable autofocus because your image won't be so bright in the camera and the autofocus will not get confused. Uh, but the thing is, the Leeming LUT, the image looks so, so good with the way he does the colors that uh, I just, I can't get away from it. I love it too much. So I am willing to put up with the fact that if I do this, I will lose autofocus on my pretty face. So I am sure not to do this in many situations when I am using S-Log3. Anyway, just something to be aware of. I definitely will be using S-Log3 in the studio when I need to, because why not? You know, it's just, boy, the ZV-E10, he just keeps surprising me. Just with two years with this camera and you think you know everything. Now I'm using S-Log3. It's paired up with my FX30. Can't tell the difference between the two footages. You know, as someone said the other day, you know it's not footages, right? You know it's just footage. Yes, I know, I'm dumb, but I'm not that dumb. So if you own a ZV-E10, how do you color grade? Do you use picture profile off? Do you use a different profile? How do you do it? Let me know down below. Maybe S-Log too. Some people like to use that. We'll have a nice little discussion about it. Thanks for watching this. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.